Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy. I'm Mark Ashton, M. Ashton1138. Hey, Mark, uh, I guess Mark got a uh, package from who? Fox Tech? Got it from Fox Tech. Um, somebody posted on the forum the other day um, about Fox Tech carrying a new uh, dual band antenna that was good for 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. So I said, you know what? I'm going to order one. We'll put it on the VNA and do some other little testing and see what we can figure out if this thing even is what they say it is because frankly actually it's not possible look it, it's just not possible it, just the physics of how you rotate a signal it's possible to do dual polarized at multiple bands but circular isn't possible because you can't change the speed at which a wave propagates out it, it just so i'm wondering if what frequency is actually built for I, it, some, something tells me they just said oh this works at this frequency so it must work at this one or something to that tune that's my guess yeah well what i saw was last year at one of the shows i saw a guy came up and uh said that he had some circular antennas uh brand new that were awesome and uh supposed to be the latest and greatest and what we found was uh when we took the cover off they were completely messed up they were not connected on all four sides uh, only two of the loads were connected to the ground plane. I didn't and see so, that one. <laughs> uh, it was kind of kind of a, a funny situation. So that's basically what this is. So we're going to take a look and see what it what it actually does. And we're going to just go straight from opening the box, pop it right there on the end, uh, the antenna analyzer there, and see what we come up with. And a caveat is, is I don't even know what that is. I he just went ahead and <laughs> bought it because he it made him laugh. So chances are I'm probably going to laugh at it too. Um, but it, we, right here as he's opening that, um, this is my vector network analyzer and a prototype antenna I've been playing with for a while called the Cyclone. Um, and you can see what I'm showing here is the rejection plot. Basically you want to see a nice deep V which tells you that's where the center frequency is. And of course I can change this mode um, to something along the lines of, come on buddy, measure something like VSWR, so we could see that the standing wave ratio of this antenna is 1.008. So that would be a basically a perfect match. You're not going to find much better than that. So, uh, oh, we got it? Yeah, we got it. Let's okay. open her up. Uh, well, this is covering 2200, 2600 right now. So this is 2.4 antenna. So let's go back to, uh, let's measure the, um, the uh, rejection. So, all right, so what we got... Here it is. It's packaged pretty nice, a nice little clamshell. Um, says uh, broadband mushroom antenna. <laughs> I wonder where they got that name <laughs> yeah. from. Uh, applicable to 5.8 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and other wireless devices. Um, is this one of those ones that you like cut yourself trying to get open? Uh, no, I think I can get it open without it. Yeah, it'll okay. open without it. But they also have technical specs on the back. I think you might want to read this. It's kind of funny. Frequency range 2400 to 2483, 5400 to 5945. Uh, that's Wi-Fi. That, 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 they just printed that. That's a Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's Wi-Fi. So input impedance of 50 ohms. Okay. VSWR less than or equal to 1.5. Uh, gain 3 dB. Okay, I find that hard to believe in a CP Omni. Okay. But, yeah. All right. All right. Let's, let's put bash in them and throw it on the analog. Well, horizontal beam width. You'll love this. Horizontal beam width of uh, 20 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees. Now I know why you're laughing. There is no beam on an Omni! <laughs> oh. All right, so let's break this little puppy right. open. We're going to put it on the VNA before we open it up and take a look and see what it is. And they did get it right. It is actually an SMA. Okay, so it is an SMA. Go ahead. So let's put this guy on here. Now this is 2.4. This is showing 2200 to 2600 megahertz. Not bad. Minus 9... Well, it's jumping around. It's minus 8.8 .8 dB. It's not terrible. It's not good, but it's not Check terrible. Check the VSWR. It's, it's SWR is what most people know. Um, that's 2.1 VSWR. So right off the gate, and that's a low point. Let, let's let's see, uh, tell this thing to find the minimum. Uh, minimum is at 2352 megahertz, and it's at 2.2 SWR. Now let's change the frequency here. They said that's 5.8 as well, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, let's go 54. It says 5400 to 59.45. Let's just go all the way up to 6 gigahertz. Yeah. I can stop at, oops, I hit gigahertz here. That's uh, 5400 megahertz. Um, so we do get some resonance there. Uh, marker tools, marker search, minimum. At 5607 at 1.08. Not bad. A little imbalance, 
a lot of imbalance. So let's see what this actually. Let me make sure my hand isn't detuning it. It, it appears to. Uh, yeah, so it, it's actually, the cable is actually resonating. What I'm actually doing is grounding the, the cable with my hand here. Um, and I'll show you what that does with a properly designed antenna if you don't grab this. So the real SWR here is closer to about 1.9. I probably should have done this. Let's go back over to 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, let's, I hit the wrong button, didn't I? Measure, format, SWR, frequency distribution. 22, ah, start, 2200 megahertz, and I'll go to stop, 2600 megahertz, okay, so it actually gets a little bit better if I do that here, so I take marker tools, marker search minimum, uh, it's 2.0 at 2296, uh, all right, Throw this guy on. Probably shouldn't have done that, but it should survive. That. <laughs> okay, so what if I do this? Go to marker tools, marker search, minimum. So you can see my cable, mine showing 1.017, my hand on it, and with it off, 1.02. So I have very little cable resonance. Uh, what this, what basically what I'm showing you is whether the antenna inside is resonating or whether the cable is. That difference when I you know, obviously you grab the resonating part, it's going to attempt to resonate through your body. And I'm just basically grounding it out. A properly built antenna will shift very little when you grab the, grab the cable. So uh, let's see what's inside. Let's I open guess. her up. Let's open her up. I'm guessing it's a clover leaf? Skew wheel. Skew wheel? Well, okay. I, I would have guessed a clover leaf. Whoa. It is. Uh, let me zoom in on that thing. Ooh. Do we even know? What is that? What the hell is that? That thing is... <laughs> uh, uh, you're all zoomed in pretty good on it. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this thing... Um, I, I'm speechless. Okay, I gotta see it. I gotta, I gotta see this thing. The lobes aren't the same. Um, well, I can see where they got the 5600 megahertz from because you're going to get, you've got two closed loop antennas at 100 ohms impedance, closed loop. Yeah. So that's probably where that comes from. And then I guess these are acting as sort of a parasitic. So that's where their 5.8 gigahertz band comes from. Not that I'm going to say that's accurate. Gosh. I... Okay, that's just, I'll just, I'll just admit, this is just bad. It, it, it's just, it's just really bad. And I, I'm not afraid to. To tell people this is garbage, but it's about what I expected. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you this much: it's not a mushroom antenna. <laughs> um, no, I got a couple of them up there somewhere um, in my dead antenna box. And it, 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 they, they, they're close with their claim on the one better than 1.5 uh, VSWR. At the 5600, um, yeah. 5, it's 1.9. Um, but at 2.4. But that's not circular either. It's not. That's yeah. not circular. That's. I would. Looking at that, I mean, it being two closed loops, I mean, think of a bi quad. That's, that's very similar to a radiation pattern of a bi quad, except without the back plate. So, what it's actually going to do is it's going to resonate um, a linearly polarized beam out the top and the bottom at about 7 dB. Because a closed loop is 4 dB. So you're, what you really have in this is a 7 dB omni that radiates almost like an hourglass shape out the top and the bottom is what that's really going to look like. And then you've got some parasitic effect, but I think those are out so far enough outside that it's well, it's not, not affected. It's not even symmetrical. <laughs> not, I mean, not even close. Um, uh. Okay, I was giving the benefit of the doubt. I didn't inspect it that closely. No, it, it's not symmetrical at all. Um, this element is about touching the closed loop. This one is not even close to touching it. Um, there's about an eighth of an inch between that, you know, this element to this element, this element to this element. There's not even a sixteenth of an inch to, between the two. Um, well, I'll tell you what we have to do then. We just have to fly it and try it. 
we'll, we'll try it, and then we'll try it up against uh, another antenna. To me, it looks like they stamped the Spiro net and just screwed it up. I think they screwed us. That's what I think, is it's a screwed up Spiro net. <laughs> I think it's They exactly. got stamped incorrectly. I got a Spiro net here. Um, I really think that's what, what I do happened. have a Spiro. I don't know if I can open it, but I do have a Spiro. Should be able to. There, that's a Spiro. Looks like same construction technique. This is, yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a similar, it's not the same, but it is similar. Okay, similar. Um, it is a similar construction technique. I'm just wondering if they tried to use this same construction technique and trying to rip off Sander and Immersion RC and screwed it up and then said, how do we sell this? Could be. Um, but hey, I fly 2.4. So we'll take it out and we'll fly some 2.4 stuff, see what it does. Um, we've got some 5.8 transmitters, and we'll fly that too and hey, see what that does. Let's go to Spyro net real quick. All right. You know that was about 1.9 in this band at, at uh, 5600. Um, Spyro not looking bad. See uh, marker tools minimum. Okay, minimum is showing 5400 at 1.3. Let's uh, let's bring that uh, marker over a little bit. To uh, where you're actually going to fly, which is about here. Uh, so the Spyro net's about 1.6 to uh, 2.4. So Spyro net's a little better, not not much. Spyro net still has the same balance issue, but not nearly as yeah. You know. um, considering the Spyro net's at least built somewhat right, I would expect it to perform better. But we can do side by side. Let's see how they do. All right. That's all for now, folks. Keep your wings in the sky.